this episode of Automail Answers, we're going to give you the basics on perimeter wires, island wires, and guide wires. What's the difference? Why are they important? Uh, how do they work? That kind of stuff, because we've seen a lot of uh, different answers given on questions about these different wires, and we know people are getting mixed up as to which ones are which and the amounts they can use, and well, basically they're getting their wires crossed about these wires. So we're going to try to straighten this out and keep it as simple as possible for you so you don't get lost in the process. So we're just going to jump right into this here by going back to the good old technical manual and starting there. So we don't have to go too far into the technical manual to answer the question as to what the recommended maximum length of boundary wire is for an auto mower. Right here, this is the, the chart from the uh, 400 series automower technical manual. It's basically the same uh, specs as in the uh, manual for the 300 series and some of the smaller uh, automowers out there. You can see maximum length of boundary wire recommended 800 meters. Now, you notice below that maximum length of guide wire 400 meters. So, there's a difference there between a guide wire and a boundary wire. And as you can see right here, they do not count towards the same totals. Now, we'll explain all that in a little bit, but keep that 800 meters in mind because that's a pretty important number. And the reason why that's an important number is if you go above that 800 meters, as it says here in the manual, your signal is going to start to diminish meaning you might have you know, a good solid loop system, no breaks in your wire or anything like that, but your signal's getting weak. What that means is when your mower gets out to the middle of a wide open area, there's a good chance it's not gonna receive the signal from the wires. So now that we know that guide wires do not count in that 800 meters they recommend for the boundary wire, what you do have to remember is the wires that go in and around your objects and then back out to create an island, that counts in that 800 meters of boundary wire because that is part of the boundary or loop system there. So you need to figure that in carefully. In here in the manual, you can see at the bottom, it says obstacles within the working area that can be run into should still be demarketed by the boundary wire even though the function of the robotic lawnmower does not demand this. And their reason says here, it will then make operations quieter and significantly reduce wear on the robotic lawnmower. So that's not really a big deal, especially on these newer ones because they put the rubber bumpers on there and everything. So that one there is, that's a time where you, we go against the manual because if you're getting up there around 800 meters, find some trees and some other objects that you don't have to go around to save yourself some wire so you can make a bigger working area for this mower. Um, you know, if you can put a border around a flower bed or a garden and let the mower run into it, hey, that's wire you're saving, especially if it's something that is smack dab out in the middle of your yard and you have to spend all that wire running out to the object to make, you know, a, a, a five foot circle around it. And then you're doing, you know, 30 feet of wire going one way in and one way out. What sense does that make, you know? get some four by fours, build a little frame around that thing and uh, save yourself some wire for that 800 that they're allowing you for your loop system. So now the guide wire, and this is the one you wanna pay real close attention to. Why? Because this is something that I've never even heard them explain in all the trainings I've gone to. Because this is something that you'll learn if you make the mistake of running a, a guide wire that's way too long and wonder why it doesn't work. So let's start here at the top. The guide wire together with the part of the boundary wire that comprises the return to the charging station is called the guide wire. The current in the guide loop always goes from the guide wire to the left in the connection between the guide wire and the boundary wire. Now, Everybody always just thinks that this is like some kind of an antenna wire. It doesn't matter how long it is. You just run it from the charging station, connect it into the boundary wire somewhere, and you're good to go. Wrong. 
This is actually a guide loop. You very rarely hear anybody use the term guide loop. But the significance of using that term, guide loop, is the fact that this isn't just a single wire, it's an actual loop giving out a different signal, a different frequency. So you need to figure in when you're running a guide wire out there, not just how long that wire is from the charging station to your boundary, but the distance from where you tie into the boundary and then to the left of that, all the way around your boundary wire back to the charging station. Because that is the loop that they're saying should not be over 400 meters. Now, 400 meters is a lot. You know, if you've got 800 meters for the entire boundary system and you're getting 400 meters for a guide wire, it's splitting the thing in half. Um, but, you know, I have seen this happen and have seen people do this where they just run a guide wire way out to the middle of nowhere or they've got it zigzagged all around, you know, different things in the property and, and stuff like that. And they tie it into the boundary wire and... It's got a, the signal's got to go the whole way back around to the charging station, and the signal is so weak on that guide wire that the mower doesn't follow it. And it says that right down here, the strength of the uh, signal in the guide loop depends on the loop's length. The guide loop must therefore not be longer than approximately 400 meters. The longer the guide loop, the lower the strength of the signal, and the more difficult it is for the robotic lawnmower to follow the guide wire. Plain and simple, right there it is in perfect English, right there in this technical manual. Um, so that's something you've definitely got to take into consideration when you're laying out a guide wire. How often do they tell you that? Very rarely. They just say, yep, just run a guide wire out there and that'll help the mower get out there, that'll help the mower get back. You want to try to split the lawn or that area of the lawn as much as you can in half and that's it. They don't really tell you that you're creating another loop with inside your main loop. So take that into consideration, as I said, as you're laying out your guide wires and you're planning on where you're going to attach them to your boundary wire. Here in the manual, they give you an illustration of how they recommend you do the guide wire. And you can see it comes out of the charging station, goes around there, and they show the arrows of the way the current flows back to the charging station. And it says right there in the middle of the page, Make the guide loop as short as possible. If the guide loop is longer than 400 meters, it may be hard for the mower to follow the wire. The shorter you keep it, the stronger your signal strength is. So if you're wondering why it takes your mower so long to find that guide wire and get back to the charging station, shorten up your guide wire or connect it to the perimeter in a different spot to shrink down the size of that loop to make your signal better. Um, so there you can see the way they have it laid out. We're going to show you some things here later on after we get through all this manual stuff. we got one more thing to talk about as far as the guide wire, and that is this. GPS assisted navigation. Good old GPS mowing. As you can see here, GPS assisted navigation uses the inbuilt GPS to check which areas are mowed and thereby which areas need to be mowed next? After a number of days operating, the robotic mower creates a map of the working area and where the guide wires are laid. In this way, the robotic lawnmower can automatically set distance and proportion for hard to reach parts of the working area. This is why you install guide wires. Even if you are using GPS mowing, you still install the guide wires because it's going to map out where those guide wires are at and it's going to use them along with all the times we've recommended that you install them so that if you have a break in your loop system, you can switch in with a perimeter wire to help narrow down where you're breaking your boundary wires at. Here is the main purpose of having the guide wires for the mower to get back and forth from the charging station to the working area and from the working area back to the charging station, whether you're using zones or not. Basically, the GPS, what it's saying here, is going to create the own, its own zones. So it's going to save you the time from doing that. So the excuse of, hey, you don't need to install guide wires. You can save yourself some money by just putting in the boundary system and using GPS mowing. It's crap. Put in the guide wires. They're there for a reason. Use as many of them as you can. Okay, so now that we gave you all that technical information, we're going to show you what all of that means and 
told you I wanted to keep it simple. So here we are with the marker board and going to give you an idea here of uh, how to lay these guide wires out and what all that stuff was we were just talking about. So you can see here, that's your road, your driveway, you got a flower bed, your house, a garden, a shed, and of course a volcano in the background. If you've ever been to an automotive training, you know, there's volcanoes in the back 40 there, pretty much every property. So we're going to put our automower right here. Let's just say we have an outlet there because this is pretty central um, for the installation. And that's the biggest thing. Keep it as centralized as possible. So we're going to start with our boundary wire. And this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to come out, go around the house, around the entire property. You know, we're going to do our islands and stuff. So what I recommend doing before you go to do anything with the installation, get a measuring wheel, whether you have to buy one, borrow one, whatever, and walk the entire area where you're going to put down your boundary wire. See how much wire you're going to use before you go planning out your installation. Um, because this is going to this is gonna give you an idea of where you stand with that recommended 800 meters. If you're close to that, if you're over that. And if you're over that, now's the time where you can decide, okay, you know, my garden, um, I'm going to put a fence around it. I'm going to build some kind of border around it. My flower bed, I'm going to put, you know, railroad ties or, you know, landscaping four by fours or something around it. So I don't have to waste that wire going around here. My shed, I'm not going to put an island around it. The mower can just bump into it. Um, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, like I said before, if you have a tree right here smack dab in the middle of your yard and you've got to waste the wire to come in from somewhere here and you're going, you know, 40 feet in to do a circle around a tree just because it's got some uh, nasty roots sticking up and then you're going 40 feet back out. That's a lot of wire you're using there. So it's just much easier to build something around that tree or come up with some kind of uh, barrier there that the mower can just bump into and keep going. Um, again, you know, ways to cut down that wire is what's going to be able to make you or what's going to give you the ability to expand your working area. Everybody wants to classify these mowers as only being able, being able to do a certain amount of acreage. And honestly, the acreage doesn't really have anything to do with how much these mowers can cover. The amount of wire in your boundary system plays a huge part in how much they can cover. If you can stretch 800 meters of wire out across a two acre property, yeah, it's going to be able to mow that, you know, 450 X could handle that. Um, Cause you've got to figure if you've got a two acre property, not all of that is going to be mowing. You know, you're going to have a driveway, you're going to have flower beds, you're going to have a house, you're going to have a garden, a shed, volcano, trees. Um, you know, maybe you got a big pole barn out here, stuff like that where it's not actually going to be mowing. So you're going to end up with, you know, when at two acres, you might end up with an acre and a half um, that you're mowing. So you want to be able to use that boundary wire to spread that working area as much as you can. So again, just my advice there, get a measuring wheel, go around, figure everything out that way before you start buying wire, before you just start randomly throwing the wire down and, and making islands around everything in your yard. Take my advice on that one. Uh, I know that, that system pretty well. I've been through that several times, and it works. It'll save you a lot of hassle later on. So now what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to come out from our charging station. We're going to go around the house here. We're going to come down in front of the house. And here we need to make our decision, as I just said. Are we putting an island around a flower bed? Are we putting a border around it? And you also want to measure or, you know, try to come in from the shortest way possible. You know, here the driveway is a little bit shorter than the roadside, you know, let's just say. Um, but say it was the other way around and this flower bed was closer to the road. And yeah, you're going to save some wire by coming into the flower bed from that shorter side. But 
if, if it's along the road and it's an area where you get snow or something like that and there's no curb here, I recommend not bringing it in from the road because I would bring it in here. That way you just don't take that chance of, you know, a snow plow getting over there and tearing up your wire because if it tears up that boundary wire, that's one thing because you just got a straight stretch. If you have islands coming off of there, God only knows how much of this wire from the island it's going to, the plow would grab and rip out of there. So then you're replacing, you know, wire for your island and for your boundary. So keep it simpler. Just come in from the area that you know would have less possibility of getting screwed up. So we'll continue this around here. And we're going to make an island around this flower bed. So we're going to come in. We're going to go around our flower bed. And then we're going to go back out. Now, when you go back out, if you're doing that island, you want to keep the wire right on top of each other. You don't want to cross them because that will screw up the signal. But keep them as close together as possible. If you can put them right on top of each other, use the same staple, all the better. Because the closer those wires are, the better the signal is. And again, if you get up around that 800 meter mark, you go above that by a little bit. If you have a gap between these two wires, the one coming into the island and the one going out from the island, the signal is going to diminish when you get over that 800 meter mark, and this is where it's going to show. The signal is going to be not going to be strong enough here at these two wires for the mower to know what's going on and cross over it. It's going to get to it. It's going to sense that weak signal and think it's at the boundary, and it's not going to want to cross there. Ran into this one quite a few times and had to make modification to some islands. And, well, let's just say I've learned my lesson and now I'm passing this information on to you. So, we're coming down here along the road. And we come back around our property line. And <clears throat> we'll come up here. We've got to go in. You always got to do an island around a volcano because you don't want your auto mower falling into a volcano because there is no recovering from that one. And back out to the boundary up here. Like I just said, you know, the garden, you got to figure out if you want to do a boundary around it or not. Um, just for the sake of this, we're going to go in, do an island around our garden because, well, it's easier than putting a fence up. Then we're going to come over here. The shed, we're going to let go. It can just bounce into the shed. It can run into it, turn around, do its thing. We're not worried with an island around the shed. Then back up around our property line here and back into our charging station. So the 800 meters of wire that we can use that they recommend for the boundary system is everything in red. That is it there. That's what you can use up to 800 meters for. That is, if you go over 800 meters, your signal is going to diminish. So islands and the perimeter, all of that counts in that 800 meters. Nothing else. Guide wires do not count in that. Now, on to the guide wires. So what do the guide wires do? Well, as I said, they connect from the charging station to somewhere in the perimeter wire. And you saw that picture that they show you in the manual there where they have the guide wire coming out here, going around the house, and then right into here, keeping it nice and short. Because if your guide wire is too long, it's going to be the same way as your perimeter wire. It's going to weaken the signal. So now you don't have to, I mean, this is a big yard, so you're not going to go as extreme as they did and that, that diagram there and the, from the manual because they had a pretty narrow opening here, you know, so they stuck real close to it. They were able to keep theirs nice and short. And if you've ever been to any kind of an automotive training, you know, everything is just this perfect scenario where it's a perfectly square yard and you got one random Island like right here and that's it. You know, the real world, it doesn't work like that, at least not where I come from and not with the installations I've dealt with. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring a, a guide wire. We're going to come out here and then we're going to come up around and uh, we're going to take this guide wire here and then into here. And the reason we're going to stay out here a little bit more is because it helps to split the yard in several ways here. It helps to split it this way, uh, this part of the yard, and it helps 
with this way. So if the mower's down here in this corner, it's not going to have a hard time getting a signal from that guide wire because that guide wire um, signal is going to be nice and strong because this is a pretty short loop here. And if you remember, they said about how the guide wire and the wire coming back to the charging station creates the guide loop because it comes here and it goes, the signal comes into here and it goes to the left. So that signal is coming around here on top of this boundary wire like this. So now this, all of this right here is a new loop. So again, because it's nice and short, that signal coming from there, nice and strong. If the motor's over here, it can pick it up and it's going to take that right around there. Or because the mower gets signal from the boundary wire, the signal in the boundary wire goes to the left. The mower can come here. If it doesn't sense that, that guide wire, it'll eventually grab the, the boundary wire. It'll come around here to where it gets a better signal from that guide wire and hops on it and takes a straight shot in. That's the basics there of, of a simple guide wire or guide loop setup. Now, like I say, you always want to use as many guide wires as you can because let's say your little automower is way out here by the volcano and you need it to get back to the charging station rather than just jumping itself into the volcano. So you're going to want to run a guide wire to the backyard too. So that one there, we're going to come up here and we're going to go out around and we're going to come over here and we're just going to tie into this perimeter wire. Now again, signal goes to the left. That right there, that is going to be a pretty long guide loop because basically this is almost half of your loop system here. And if you were at nearly 800 meters for your entire setup, then you know if you just split your loop in half, you've got about 400 meters there, which is what they recommend for the limit on a guide wire. <clears throat> so now, because we came over here to this side, you know, and uh, we got an island or two over there and stuff, it it's close, you know. These are just you know, lines I, I drew on here. We don't have exact measurements for anything. So just for the heck of it, let's say that this here guide wire isn't quite working right. You know, the mower's getting over in here and it's just not picking it up. So then what we would do is we could actually take this guide wire and instead of running all the way out there to that perimeter wire, we can bring it on over here to our island wire and tie it in there because that island is part of the boundary wire. So it's the same thing you're putting into this boundary or into this island here as it would be in here. So now we've just shortened this up. We've made the signal stronger. So if the mower is over in here, this loop is putting out a stronger signal. The mower can catch it and it will go on back home. Now, the one thing you can't do, as I say, you can run a guide wire into an island wire is you can't connect it here where these two, uh, you can see it better here, where these two wires are going to cancel each other out. You can't bring that up here and connect into that because that is going to screw the entire system up. These are meant to cancel each other out. So if you put a third wire in there connected into this, that mower is not going to know what to do. It's not going to bother to cross that. That guide wire is probably not going to work. So avoid doing something like that. Run it to the open part of an island or to the boundary wire. Plain and simple. Now, here's the tricky part. Because you're probably going to want to guide wire over to here. So, here's where they're saying 400 meters for a guide loop. Um, that's going to be a tough one. Because if this is a large install, there's a very good chance that this is going to be a very, very weak signal over here. Yeah, I know your charging station is right here, but as it said, that loop is created by taking this wire, connecting it to this one, and everything going around to the left. So that's around all these islands and back down around here. So the nice thing about this is if you run a guide wire over there, 
You can keep it nice and short. Now, let's see, what color can we use for that one? Use this purple here. Bring it over here. Just nice and short like that. You know, for the most part, it's not going to be as effective as these here, for sure. Um, if this is a, a, a smaller layout and you're well below that 800 meters, then yeah. You know, if, if this whole layout here is 500 meters, then yeah, you could probably get away with that. Um, wouldn't be an issue. Um, the signal would probably be, you know, stronger here closer to the charging station than it would out here. So that may help you out. But if there's a way to, you know, keep from having to go down in that valley as much, and you can come out here and attach even, you know, up here, you're still going to be bringing that wire around there. So you're not really gaining anything, but you know, no, a, a weak signal is better than no signal. So if you've got to run a wire out there or you have the ability to, go for it. Because like I just said, any wire is better than no wire. So if you want to come out and you want to go straight into here, that would be the best way to do it from the way the manual says and, you know, the way this is laid out. Don't try to go down in there because you're getting further away. And if you come out here and you go up around this way, you're getting further away from down there. And, you know, you're still using the, almost the same amount of wire. Uh, or at least it's going to be the almost the same amount as far as your guide loop goes. So, um, you know, if it's on that side, it's a tough one. But, you know, you can hope for the best there. So at any rate, every one of these... Um, guide wires puts out a different a different signal so each loop each guide loop has a different signal in it so this is the other thing that's going to help you when you have a large layout if you're getting above that 800 meter mark for your your boundary wire and your signal is starting to diminish for your boundary wire your guide wires remember that they're putting off another signal so the mower is still going to be able to use the guide wire to pick up a signal of some sort and know where it's at. So if this is a huge layout and say you're at 900 meters. Normally when, when a mower would get out of here, that signal is going to be weak and it would just stop moving and say there's no loop signal. Your wire is perfectly good and connected, but it wouldn't be able to catch that signal because it's just too far away from everything. But with this guide wire here, it's still going to know where it's at. Because it's going to have a good idea that that guide wire is there. And it's going to get the signal from that guide wire and keep on moving. So where you place your guide wires plays a large part in how much wire you can use for your boundary system. So the other big thing with guide wires, um, you know, the reason why we recommend you install every one that you possibly can, is if you get the dreaded blue light in your charging, st uh, charging station, meaning that your wire is broken or there's a bad connection somewhere in your boundary wire, what you can do is you could then take and disconnect, like say this wire here for this side of the boundary wire and connect this guide wire in there. So now everything in this loop right here is connected to your charging station. If your light turns green, you know everything from this guide wire and around and back into the charging station is good. If it's flashing blue, then you've just narrowed this down and you know that your broken wire or bad connection is somewhere in this area. And you can keep doing that. You know, if you, okay, everything's green here. Then you take this one off, this guide wire, and connect this guide wire as your boundary wire on this side. So now you're checking everything going around here and back around. Same thing. If it's green, you know this whole half over here is good. If it's flashing blue, then what you would do is you would start with this guide wire here because you knew from here back around was good. So somewhere from here... To here has got to be your break. Um, you know, same way on this side, you can connect, disconnect the perimeter wire over here, connect in this guide wire here is that perimeter wire. So it's just going to give you this loop. If it's green, you're good to go. If it's flashing blue, then you know it's somewhere in here. 
Um, if you connect this one to this side and have this boundary wire connected in, then it would be everything around here that you'd be testing. So that's a good way to narrow down where your brake is at and save you a lot of time and save you the big expensive repair bills of having a dealer come out and try to find the brake in the wire in the ground. Um, because that's probably going to be the way that they're going to start out. They're going to use that method there to figure out where in this mess of wires um, they should start searching. So just a little tip there and a recommendation to follow when you're doing an installation. So hopefully this helps you understand the wires a little bit better and and how to place them and what they do and what your limitations are on the wires. At least now you know that when somebody says they recommend 800 meters of wire or less, they're not talking about your guide wires, your boundary wire, your islands, and all that stuff. 800 meters or less, again, just your islands and your boundary. That's it. The 400 meters of wire per guide is not guide wire 400 meters, meaning you can't just take one guide wire, come out here, loop down around here, and back up around the whole thing, you know, and then tie in over here. Um, 400 meters means the entire system. So you need to figure that one out on your own uh, when you go to install the guide wire, and that's where a measuring wheel comes in very handy. Um, you know, you need to figure out if you've got too big of a, a loop you're trying to cover there. Yeah, you know, like this one here, this wire might only be, you know, 100 feet, but that whole loop is going back around this island, over here, around this island, back over here, around this island, and then back around. So you got to take all that into consideration. This might only be 100 foot of wire, but that loop might be, you know, 600 meters. So make sure of that before you go, you know, calling tech support and your dealer saying, hey, my guide wire over here, the mower's not, not catching it. It just, you know, back and forth over top of it and doesn't work. Um, take all this stuff into consideration. Make sure you ask your dealer. If you have somebody coming out to install this from a dealership or something, you know, make sure to question them about this because there are a lot of dealers, like I say, that think that, okay, we're just going to run three guide wires. Um, we're going to run these two like that. And our third one is just going to be come out over here and then straight up there, split that yard in half, and we're good to go. When you start having issues with your mower just wandering around over here and it doesn't know what to do, that's probably going to be why, because this guide loop now coming out here, going to the left, is just too big, you know? The mower's just not going to sense it. When it gets back over to here, you know, if it randomly comes out to here, right about there, it might start to pick it up because it's closer to the charging station. The signal will be a little bit stronger in that wire. That's a possibility, but... More than likely, what's going to happen is it's going to ignore that guide wire, and it's just going to start following the boundary wire until it gets back to somewhere where it can pick up a better signal and get closer to one of these other guide wires. So make sure if you're doing your layout, plot it out like this, um, then go out there with a the measuring wheel, You know, check everything out. Like I said, if you have somebody coming in to do the installation for you, Make sure you question them about this stuff. Take this stuff into consideration. That way you know where everything's going to be. Um, you know, if you have an issue down the road, you know what's causing it or have a better idea what's causing it. And, you know, you're not spending a whole lot of money having them come back and, and you know, trying to guess and, and just double check their work and stuff like that. So that does it for this episode of Automower Answers. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you liked this video or learned anything from it. Make sure to drop us some comments. Give us some feedback about issues you're having with your automower so we know what videos to put together. Uh, we want to help you guys out the best we can, and uh, we don't know what you need help with if we don't hear from you. So thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting our channel, and keep checking back because we're always putting out new material.